Tampa Stadium is sold out as the Chicago Bears come to town to face the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We're live at Tampa Stadium on an absolutely gorgeous day. Temperature in the low 80s. A little bit windy, but it's a perfect day to play. Good afternoon. I'm Pat Summerall, and I thank everyone anyway connected with the NFL this week through a sigh of relief because the strike is over and the regulars are back. Both Mike Ditka of the Bears and Ray Perkins of the Buccaneers told us they were amazed at the kind of condition the regular players came back. They were ready to play last week. And today we'll see what an authentic contest should really look like. Let's look at the standings in the NFC Central Division now. The Bears on top with their record of 4-1, 2-0 and and oh within the division. The Buccaneers 3-2 and 2-1 two and two and one within the division. So this is indeed a battle for first place. The enthusiasm of both regular squads amazed their coaches, as I said, and John Madden, of course, is here with me. What about the Chicago Bears? Well, you know, the Chicago Bears, I thought, going into the strike, were the best team in the NFL, and Mike Ditka says, we're really antsy. I mean, these guys want to play, and he said they wanted to play in the middle of the week. One of the reasons is they were one of the teams that came back early. They came back last Thursday thinking that they could play against New Orleans, so they've had 10 days to get ready for this thing. Of course, the big news here is that Jim McMahon is back. McMahon's active. We asked Ditka last night when he would play. He said, what I'd like to do is slip him in there. Maybe in the second quarter. If not in the second quarter, I'll start him in the second half. John, you get a feeling here in Tampa that there is a much more positive attitude. What about the Bucks? Well, I think Ray Perkins brings that. He, he came here from Alabama, of course, after coaching the New York Giants. And, and he's instilled that type of thing where you have the young guys. They have an aggressive defense. They're going after them. Of course, they drafted Heisman Trophy winner Vinny Testaverde. Testaverde won't start, probably won't even play, because they feel that they need the veteran right now. They need Steve DeBerg, a guy who is capable of having a hot hand. And as I said, it's a beautiful day for football. The Bears got the win. They'll kick off. It'll be Kevin Butler who's signaling that he's ready to go. Bobby Futrell back in the middle for the Buccaneers retreats three yards deep in the end zone and stays there. Tampa Bay will be operating in the first quarter against the wind. The Bears have it. Steve DeBerg is the starting quarterback. The veteran from San Jose State. He'll face this defense. Dan Hampton, Steve McMichael, William Perry and Richard Dent. And three of the best linebackers anywhere. Otis Wilson, Mike Singletary in the middle and Wilbur Marshall. Secondary has Phillips and Jackson on the corners. Dave Durison and Todd Bell, the two safeties. First and ten Buccaneers, their own 20. Jeff Smith moves in motion. DeBerg back to throw, blitzing early. DeBerg just got rid of it. DeBerg under pressure from Otis Wilson. DeBerg, the quarterback, James Wilder and Jeff Smith start at the running back spots. Freeman and Gerald Carter are the wide receivers. Up front, a big offensive line. Taylor, Conrad Goody, who used to be with the Giants, Grimes, Mallory, Ron Heller at right tackle. And the tight end is Calvin McGee. Phil Freeman wide to the left. Gerald Carter wide to the right. Smith again in motion. And the bird gets it out in a hurry. On the ground, incomplete. Intended for Jeff Smith. That'll bring up a third and ten situation. Yeah, it was interesting, Pat. The last time these two teams played, of course, was the second game of the season. And DeBerg threw a lot on first down. So the Bears knew that. I think they expected that. So on first down, the Bears came on their blitz. Third down conversions. Chicago's opponents have been held to just 28.6%. Carrier now split wide to the left as the Bucks go with three wide receivers. The bird in, he gets the pressure, but he has a pass complete to Phil Freeman. And enough for a first down. Mike Richardson made the stop. A gain of 16. Yeah, we talked about Steve DeBerg's experience. The other thing is his ability to get back and get rid of the ball quickly. They've had three downs, they've thrown three passes. And I think they know that if they have a chance offensively against the Bears, that it has to be throwing the ball. You can't make a living against this defense running the football. Contrary to what Ray Perkins told us yesterday, he said 
When you ask him what he thought the key to it, victory was, he said, we got to be able to run. Wilder is the lone setback, and here is the first run. And Wilder hammers outside the 40. Stopped by Singletary, but a good gain of one of seven. You know, it's an interesting thing. I think maybe you could get a little running against this bear defense only if they think you're going to pass. So maybe instead of establishing the run first, then trying to go to pass, I don't know if anything works in this defense, but maybe the opposite. Maybe you establish you're going to pass and, and then run and catch them off balance. If this makes sense in talking to DeBerg, he thinks the Bears think that they are going to pass on first down. And it did look like it in the early series. The first series. Here's DeBerg back to throw. Has some time and has a man, Ron Hall. And another Buccaneer first down. Todd Bell on the stop. That was one of the guys that Ray Perkins likes is Ron Hall. He's a rookie. We see him coming in motion right there at the bottom of the screen. Then he stops. Then he's going to come underneath, and DeBerg hits him. And the thing that, that Perkins likes about him is he's a blocker. Wasn't supposed to be a receiver. He said he surprised everyone. He does catch the ball well. Gerald Carter split wide to the right and Freeman to the left. First down, Tampa Bay at their own 49-yard line. Bears fake a blitz this time. Don't bring it. Almost picked off by Otis Wilson. Intended for Carter. Wilson had uh, a lot of space in front of him. I'll tell you, there is a guy who I think would very well be the best linebacker in football. One of the best. I mean, I think everyone talks about Lawrence Taylor, rightly so. I think this guy is right up there in that category. Maybe of the great players, maybe the most underrated of them. Certainly the least publicized. You don't hear that much about him outside of Chicago. I tell you, but you watch him play. The guy's all over the field. And once you get him fired up, nobody's going to block him. Watch out. The Berg retreats straight back. Outside completes the hall. Out of bounds at the pair 46. A pickup of six. Todd Bell knocked him out. This is the one thing that they have to do is pick up the blitz. And you're going to see right in here when he comes, the back steps up, Wilder gets him. Now that gives DeBerg the time to find his tight end hall. I get the feeling, John, that this is an offensive line that does a better than average job of pass protecting, but not as effective against the run. Yeah, they're not really a strong run blocking team. In motion and they come after the bird again. It's batted down. Incomplete pass. William Perry put the pressure on and got the hand up to swat it down. Yeah, I think that's what Perry does a lot more than people think. Is you take him and what he does is he starts here and he pushes the pocket this way a lot. Other guys get free, but this is a big push in the middle. And I'll tell you, that helps an effective pass rush. Watch him. He starts here, starts around the middle, gets up and knocks the ball down. But he always gets a push up the middle. Frank Garcia back to kick for the Buccaneers and Dennis McKinnon. Standing back at his own 10-yard line. They're coming after Garcia. He got it off. Flag is down. They're going to be called for roughing the kicker. McKinnon is down. Scott Brantley down to make the tackle. But let's see who got him. I think that was Morrissey. Jim Morrissey. I think number 51 there. Again, after the ball leaves the kicker's foot, you can't touch him. He looked like he could have been down underneath the... the the foot and Garcia just fell on him. Personal foul running into the kicker. 51, five yards, first down. Ben Dreith. The veteran referee and one of the best. Morrissey is coming right up the middle. You see him free. Now he missed him. He was underneath him. I think that's a bad call. I mean, he didn't, he doesn't, as we watch it again, he doesn't really hit the kicker. Watch, he goes underneath his foot. And then the kicker falls on top of him. I don't think that's a penalty. Well, he called it running into the kicker. And it was only a five-yard penalty. Yeah, but I think the kicker sat on him. They don't have penalties for kickers sitting on guys. I have read one. <laughs> There's Carter in motion, and DeBerg starts up again. He's got a man wide open. This is Jeff Smith. And he's out of bounds at the Bear 25. 
Dave Durson knocked him out, but he got 16 yards. This is the thing that the Buccaneers can do, is they can move the ball, and they did this the last time they played against the Bears. And then something would happen. They couldn't get any scores. They'd have a turnover. They'd get stopped. They'd, they'd miss a kick. These types of things. But if they can consistently do this, they can move the ball. They were inside the Bear 25 four times and only got three points out of it. Carter in motion again and DeBerg back to throw. Has some more time. Throws behind Carter, who takes a wallop from Durson. Dewerson was saying that they're a slow starting team, that their defense doesn't always play well on that first series. I'm not sure why. I mean, these are a bunch of fired up guys, but he made that point. For some reason, when we play in a game, that first series, we're not really at our best. And then we get better as the game goes on. Now, when they get you down, you better look out. Second down and 10. Bear 25. Bird back to throw again. Has a man open. It's Carter. Breaks one tackle. Breaks another. Gets down inside the 20. Wilbur Marshall finally brought him down. But it's a gain of seven. Bucks have run just one running play. I'll tell you, the thing that is impressing me is their pass protection. Of course, their biggest pass rusher right here is the outside number 95, Richard Dent. That's Rob Taylor there blocking him. He's going to get some help from his back and some other guys. But I'll tell you, they have done, under this situation, we've already thrown 10 passes, and he's had good pass protection. Mark Carrier stood out wide to the right this time. DeBerg again back to throw. Gets it up the middle, and it's caught at the 10-yard line. I think it's Calvin McGee, the tight end, from DeBerg. They move it back just outside the 10, so they can make a first down without a touchdown. McMichael on the left side there is going to get some pressure again right up the middle, but DeBerg does two things. One, he gets back quickly. He takes a three or a five-step drop and then gets rid of the ball quickly. So part of it is pass protection. The other part's DeBerg. Bears showing blitz again, and DeBerg makes him back out of it. Gets back to Wilder. Wilder hammers over the right side. Still stays on his feet. Gets down to the seven. Richard Dent finally got him down. Falcons over Houston, 3 0. Green Bay beating Detroit, 7 0. All of those, both those, first quarter. That's Vinny Testaverde signaling in plays to DeBerg. That's, I'm sorry, that's Mike Shula. Testaverde had been doing that job. Now he's keeping charts somewhere else. Shula just joined the team this week. Don Shula's son, of course. Carter left, carrier right. The bird back. Touchdown, Calvin McGee. I'm not sure who he was throwing to. it up and the extra point is good well, we said that the bird can have a hot hand he sure started out with a hot Did hand he ever 9 13 left in the first quarter 7 nothing Tampa Bay there's one way to get open Pat here's Calvin McGee here you just run into the guy covering you knock him over get up run into the end zone and catch a touchdown pass watch him here he's a tight end no big deal there. Just run off the line, block the guy, knock him down, go in the end zone, catch touchdown pass. It's just academic. That's one way to do it. 7 nothing. Tampa Bay leads the Chicago Bears with Wiki to kick off. 
Dennis Gentry and Thomas Sanders back deep for the Bears. It'll be handled by Gentry at the five. Got a little alley. And cut down outside the 30. The Bear quarterback will be Mike Tomzak. And he'll face this defense. Not many familiar names. Cannon Stensrud, who played so many years with Houston in the middle, and Holmes up front. Linebackers, which Ray Perkins says the strength of his team, Washington, Davis, Randall, and Winston Moss. And the secondary, Ricky Reynolds and Rod Jones, the corners. Woods and Kemp, the two safety men. Now Zach starts off with Neil Anderson and Walter Payton in the backfield. And he's going to work early. Willie Gall passes intercepted by Rick Woods. But a flag down on the play. That was the thing that Mike Ditka said about Tom Sack. He said he's a good quarterback, but he just doesn't see everything, and he throws too many interceptions. There was a collision involving Willie Galt and one of the Buck defenders. And let's see who it was. Just as the pattern he started to develop. On a defense, it's a five-yard penalty and a first down. I think that's a big play for the Bears. Here's Willie Galt coming off the line of scrimmage. He gets the bump there. I guess that must that have been after it. five yards, but that one looked all right to me. Now the safety comes over and picks that ball off. It was a double coverage. Tom Sack tried to hit him between the corner and the safety. Now, you can bump within five yards. So if that was before five yards, that looked legal. It was Ricky Reynolds, the cornerback, who was involved in the contact. That makes it first and five Bears at their own 36. Tom Zach starts Ron Morris in motion. Goes back to throw again. Has his man. Neil Anderson out of the backfield. Let's look at the rest of the offense. Tom Zach quarterback Peyton and Anderson the runners Willie Galt one wide receiver Ron Morris the other offensive line and it's a good one Covert Ports Jay Hilgenberg Tom Thayer Keith Van Horn and Emory Moorhead's the tight end second and three ball is at the uh, at the Bears 43 Buccaneers leading seven nothing is split wide left. Galt is to the right. Anderson comes in motion. Comes back. Taking a page out of the Bird's book. Taking a shot for Willie Galt. Incomplete and no penalty markers this time. Ricky Reynolds again right back with him. Let's show that play again and we'll see. See, there's, there's Galt. They're just going for the ball. A little out. Really, he would have had a chance. Let's watch the play again that shows the penalty. Now this, if it's after five yards, it's illegal. So if he bumps him after that next yard marker there, that's what they called the penalty on the intercept. See, it's five, six, seven. So the official was right. After five yards, you can't bump him. That was a good call. That'll make it third and three after the incompletion. Morris and McKinnon both wide left. Gentry in motion. Tom Zach with pulls up, comes back, fires, pass incomplete. It's intended for Gentry. To punt for the Bears. Bobby Futrell alone at his own 15. Handles at the 17. Out to the 27, a punt of 40 yards, a return of 10, so they net 30. Thomas Sanders was down to make the stop. 7.47 left in the first quarter. And 
Tampa Bay. The Buccaneers leading seven to nothing over the Bears. 747 left to play in the first quarter. The first drive, they had two runs, both by Wilder, and DeBerg put it up 12 times. That got him the touchdown. Other scores, New Orleans leading San Francisco, Cincinnati over Pittsburgh, Miami over Buffalo, Patriots beating the Colts, Green Bay 14-0 over Detroit, and Dallas 3-0 over Philadelphia. All those in the first quarter. Carrier in motion. Bird gives on the counter play to Wilder. Left side for just a yard. Wilbur Marshall on the bottom of the pile. I think the last thing the Bucks want to do right now is to pull in the horn. I mean, they had a drive, 12 passes, two runs. And it might sound ridiculous, but I think that if they're going to beat these guys or give them a run, I think they have to stay with that type of percentage all day. That does not sound ridiculous in any way. Carter is split wide right this time. Flag down. Somebody moved. Ball start on number 72. 72 is Rob Taylor. He's quite a story, John. Yeah, Rob Taylor was uh, played in the USFL. And he was on a vacation down here with his wife. And he walked into the Tampa Bay Buccaneer office and he said, hey, can I have a tryout? I'd like to try out. Now here's a guy walking the streets. Look at the guy, six foot six, 280 pounds. And they said, yeah. So now here he is. Who would think you go on a vacation with the wife? <laughs> the next thing, you're the starting left tackle blocking Richard Dent. I think you were kind to him with that 280 figure. <laughs> The bird has his tight end McGee open again. He breaks a, another tackle. Calvin McGee still on his feet to the bare 40. Bestie Jackson finally got him down, but a gain of 37 yards. There's a guy, Calvin McGee. After they played last year, Dave Dur Durson said he was going to vote for this guy for the Pro Bowl. And this is the type of thing, he said, he's a wide body. He's a big load when he comes down there. He's tough to tackle. So they this isn't the first time they found out about McGee. They knew about him last year. First, he might have only got one vote for the Pro Bowl, Dave Dewerson. This is Jeff Smith around the corner for good yardage. A gain of seven before Singletary can get him down. That's his first carry. Give Wilbur Marshall an assist tackle. Jeff Smith obtained from Kansas City. And Ray Perkins' description of his running style was he's a slasher. I'm impressed with this offense. You know, the offensive coordinator of this team is Ray Perkins himself. He tried to hire one last year. He couldn't get Dan Henning, so I said, I'll do it myself. Second and three. That's Smith on the move, and that's Wiley with the ball. Chased by Hampton and cut down by Dan Hampton. No game. I still say it's a nice change up against this bear defense because you're not going to make a living running against it. There's a flag on the play and the indication by DeBerg is that it's against the Bears. Unfortunately, he's not the official. Well, Ben Dreith just signaled against the Bears also. 72, hand to the face, five yards, first down. That's the fridge in there. It was against the fridge. Using the hands to the face. Not a bad one. It's only five yards. We see him right here in the middle. See, there's a fridge there. Watch him now. He's going to work down the line, work down the line. Somewhere, as he's getting knocked backwards, he grabs his hand to the face. He's grabbed by, think, John Conrad Goody. As he crossed in front of him. Reverse coming. And now back to DeBerg. And he goes outside and has... Jeff Smith and Jeff Smith scores a touchdown. It went to Berg. 
to Wilder, to Carter, back to DeBerg, and then to Smith. Big way, weak game for the extra point with DeBerg holding. Fourteen nothing. I tell you, this is some type of play. It starts out as a reverse. Then he flips it back to DeBerg. Then DeBerg says, look what I found. 14 nothing. At Summerall and John Madden, and we're at Tampa Stadium, the home of the Buccaneers. And right now, they lead 14 nothing over the Chicago Bears. That score, when it's published around the league, will cause some shocks. Big wave, Buque's kickoff by Dennis Gentry. And again, he has a slot, but there's a flag down, way back downfield. Gentry still on his feet. Gentry gets inside the Buccaneer 40. But there's a penalty marker back, way back, inside the Bear 20-yard line. And you know it's against the Bears. Their whole team is going and huddling up back there in the 10-yard line. They didn't even go out to midfield. Illegal block on the receiving team number 37, 10 yards. Illegal block called against Maurice Douglas. And so they move the ball back inside the Bear 10. Where the Bears will have it first and 10. Those two scoring drives by Tampa Bay have been things of beauty. Well, you know, and I think as people look at this score around the country, they're going to say, I bet there were turnovers. There weren't turnovers. There was just great offensive play and a hot quarterback in Steve DeBerg. Just over four and a half minutes left to play in the first quarter. Comes back. Back to throw. Comes out to Moorhead. Moorhead gets a little breathing room out Inside the 15, a gain of nine. Bobby Kemp on uh, the stop. Yeah, we had to look at that touchdown again. I mean, you got so much stuff. Watch here. We get motion here. We get a flip here, a hand here, a reverse, a flip back here to the quarterback, and a throw here to the back for a touchdown. Now, if you can understand that, then I don't know what you're doing watching this game. Watch the handoff, the flip, the flip back, and there's Jeff Smith wide open down the sideline for a touchdown. I think you ought to put that drawing in the time capsule and see if anybody can figure it out. That's Anderson. And the flag is down again on that play. He got enough for the first down. Nothing is going right for the Bears. 63, 10 yards. Second down. Ball against Jay Hildenberg. It's something for him to hold because he's got a harness on his left shoulder and can't really extend that arm. Well, in his left shoulder, he has a torn rotator cuff. He was telling us last night that he can't snap on the punts or kicks anymore, and that's why Mark Rodenhauser has been activated. He said he has to block more with his feet now and less with his hands and shoulder. In the offseason, he's going to have to have surgery on that left shoulder. shoulder. McKinnon. Wide to the left, Galt split wide to the right. It's got more hit in motion. Comes back again, back to throw. His hit right at the goal line. Maybe a safety. It is. Ron Holmes. Not a safety. I'm sorry. It's a touchdown. He'll come from the left side. What happens? He hit the ball is knocked out of Tom Sachs' hand right into the end zone for a touchdown for the Buccaneers. Chris Washington recovered it in the end zone. Chris Washington was on the ground as Holmes hit him. He just popped that thing right out right into Washington's hand. Perkins is saying, "Hey, that's some way to get a get a touchdown." Have your defensive end hit the quarterback, knock the ball through him to your linebacker. I think it's an instant replay, Pat, here. I think they're going to see, was Mike Tomczak in a throwing motion? 
Now watch, as, as he gets hit there, no, he wasn't. Now that's a touchdown for the Buccaneers. What they're looking for is see if his arm was going forward in a pass in motion. And they're still looking. The Buccaneers came out to line up to try the extra point, and Ben Dry said, hold it while we review some more. Well, there's no way. They can review and review that one, but there's no way that contact arm was going forward. Mike Ditka must be in shock. I'll tell you, those suspenders are getting tighter. Under those arms is getting a little wetter. The NFL replay official still football, looking. It's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. That's Art McNally, who is the supervisor of officials in the NFL, who was reviewing. Big way, Wheat Game has his extra point block. It is not good. So it's 20 to nothing. With three minutes and ten seconds still left to play in the first quarter. It was blocked right here by Al Harris, number 90. He gets a push right up the middle, gets his hand up, and knocks the ball down. He's right there in the middle of the screen. Push, 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 push. Get your hand up. Get both hands up and whap it with your left one. It's Donald. Big wave, weak A's extra point. It was just blocked, and he's about to kick off. This is the most points the Buccaneers have ever scored, ever, in the first quarter. Kick. Sanders. And again, he has a little alley. Now the Bucks get him down, but a good return. Nevertheless, they get out to the 33. This young lady's name is Dina Real. She is suffering from cystic fibrosis. Her idol, Walter Payton. This took place before the game. The last time they were down here, Walter Payton gave Dina his jersey. And she's really worn it every day since. You, know, you hear so much about strikes and this and that and bad and players wanting money. It's guys like this guy right here, Walter Payton, that make him in the game something special. That was Payton with the carry, stopped by John Cannon. His career. Hey, you, you, know, you forget. I know you watch Walter Payton and you think, you know, he's just number 34. Then you think of all the things that he's accomplished. He got four yards, so it's second and six. The Bears with the ball at their own 37. Warhead moves back. Galt moves up. This is Peyton again. And got some room this time around the corner. Outside the 45, stopped by Urban Randall. But a first down for the Bears, a gain of nine. Hey, you got a good block from his left guard, Mark Bortz. Watch him. Borch will pull out and right here make the block that springs Peyton for the extra. Now watch Walter Peyton how he gets right behind 62 Borch. You see right there? Gets right behind him. Then boom, he gets that block. Then whap, he can just jump to the outside and pick up that yardage. First down bears their own 46. A minute and a half left to play in the first quarter and Tampa Bay leading 20 to nothing. Flag down on the play as Anderson swings to the outside with some room and is knocked out of bounds in front of the Buccaneer bitch. That flag was thrown before the ball was snapped. That's why, because he didn't get the ball off in the 30 seconds. Mike Tomzak, the quarterback. I think Tomzak may be feeling a little extra pressure knowing that one that McMahon is there and suited up and number two that he's going to play today. I think Mike Ditka told both McMahon and Tom Zach that McMahon would play and he didn't tell either one of them as of last night when they were when he was going to play. He sort of alluded to the fact that he would use him sometime in the second half. First and 15. He did say he didn't care what the score was. He was going to use it. 
Anderson up the middle. Stinsrud, who's done a good job at nose, nose guard for the Buccaneers, made the stop. He got six of them. You know, one thing they got out of Stensrud, they picked him up from the Minnesota Vikings this year, and, and he's a big guy. He's a nine-year veteran, but he's a little stronger than what they've had at nose tackle. And Ray Perkins says it, it really helps us in this holding up against the run. Look at that face. He looks like a nose tackle. He That's does. his face from a nose tackle. He was over 300 pounds at one time. Now he's got his weight down in the neighborhood of 290 and is playing better. Guys that are over 300 are always getting their weight down. It's a good idea. Pass incomplete intended for Morris. Ricky Reynolds, the defender. Talking about being over 300, you know, the, re the, uh, the fridge didn't make weight this week. His weight that he's given by the Bears is 315 pounds. And uh, he didn't make that. Mike Dickey didn't tell us what that number was, but it's larger this week than 315. He didn't tell us either how much he find him. He never does. But you know he does. He said he would be down next week. Third down and nine. Homzak out of the spread formation. Under pressure. Flag down. Homzak going deep. Intended for Gentry. No flag down there, but a flag back close to midfield. There's a flag over here on the other side, yeah. over on our side, on the opposite side and back uh, towards the line. It's going to be defensive holding. It'll be that defensive five holding yard. Number 29. No pass interference. The guy couldn't catch the ball. The ball was thrown out of bounds. Number 29 here is Ricky Reynolds. And again, this is on the opposite side of the field. See, and he holds right. Oh, that's more than a hole. That's that's between uh, a hole and a mall that he's doing right there on Ron Morris. That's his second violation. He's a rookie from Washington State. In fact, this whole Tampa Bay secondary is almost entirely new. Bobby Kemp is sort of the leader of that group. I was going to say Bobby Kemp is the only guy with any real long time experience. First down Bears in Buccaneer territory. With 27 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Hand off Anderson and got some room. Irvin Randall made the initial contact when Anderson got five. Anderson, of course, played at the University of Florida and has a lot of friends in attendance today. I think he's the heir apparent to Walter Payton. He's starting now with Payton and playing fullback. Of course, the last time they played, he gained about half their yards. I think eventually he'll be the starting halfback. That's the end of the first quarter with a score of Tampa Bay 20, the Bears nothing. Pat Summerall and John Madden. We're at Tampa Stadium, sold out. Game summary so far, total offense. The Buccaneers 148 yards to the Bears 31. The Birds started off with a hot hand. But right now the Bears are on the move. They made three first downs in the first quarter. The Bucks made nine. Tom Zach back to throw. Gets it outside and has it complete and knocked loose. Not sure if it's a fumble or not, but there's a scramble. A gain of three if the pass was complete. I'm sure it's one that's going to be instant replay anyway. Ricky Reynolds, number 29, the rookie who's had two penalties already, really makes up for it that one. I tell you, he came in and hit the ball and the receiver all at the same time. That's going to be an interesting one. That's McKinnon. I think that's a catch. Then I think it's a hit. Then I think it's a fumble. You break it down that way, then that has to be the Buccaneers ball. That, as I said, I'm sure that's one that's going up there to Art McNally for the replay. But it looked like to me a catch, a hit, and a fumble. That's what it is. The Bucks will take over at the Bear 48. Hey, one thing, coaches always tell their players go out and make something happen 
and you usually get your typical game, whatever that might be. But whatever Ray Perkins told those Buccaneers, if he told God make something happen, they're doing it today. When you ask him yesterday what he thought he had to do to beat the Bears, he said, uh, "We got to get after him. Maybe a little bit stronger than that, but they've gotten after him." And I think that's exactly what he told them. Look, don't worry about anything. You've had the time off. We practice. We're ready to go. During training camp this year, most teams practice twice a day. The Buccaneers practice three times a day. And their first workout this Monday was four hours. Carrier slip wide left. Carter at right. Going for Carrier. Incomplete. That one was well covered by Dewerson. For an NFL update, let's take you to New York and Brent Musburger. Well, Pat, you reported the score. Here's how San Francisco got the lead on New Orleans. Gave up a field goal, then Montana lobs, and Rice runs under it, and it is 7-3, Niners over New Orleans. Back to Pat and John. Here we're just in the opening seconds of the second quarter. And the score, and that's not uh, incorrect, it is Tampa Bay 20, Chicago Bears nothing. Second and 10. And complete. The intended for Calvin McGee. Very nearly intercepted, and McGee made a good play to keep the ball away from Otis Wilson. That was a great play by McGee. After the ball into Otis Wilson's hands, McGee just grabbed him and didn't let him get that second hand on the ball or get control of it. First of all, the ball's thrown in there. The ball bounces up. Now watch McGee. He grabs Otis Wilson by the back of the jersey and holds him from getting the ball. Tell you, that's awareness or alertness or one of those words that start with A. Awesome. Yeah. I don't think you could call it good coaching. Just awareness. Third and ten. There's no blitz. Birds pass incomplete. And almost thrown away. Solomon Miller was the intended receiver. That's Mike Singletary here. He's trying to find a hole to blitz. He goes to the left, can't find, starts one up there. Let's see where. Ah, ah, here's a little gap there. I'll take that one and take a swing at something. Took a swing, got an air ball. Yeah. Garcia. Back to kick, and Dennis McKinnon back deep for the Bears. The wind might have switched around a little bit. Bears don't put the pressure on this time, and Garcia doesn't get off a very good kick. was not a keeper. That was all a shank. All the way into the stands. A 13-yard punt. 20 to nothing with 14-17 left in the first half. Yes, number nine ranked Syracuse with a record of 7-0, although they'll be ranked higher than that, I'm sure, next week. They play the Pitt Panthers in Pittsburgh. Syracuse rolled over Colgate yesterday, 52-6. Pittsburgh got past Navy 10-6. Next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern Time here on CBS. 20 to nothing as Tomzak fires up the middle to Anderson. The ball popped loose. Peyton picked it up or tried to. Ball went out of bounds. Anderson really took a hit from Irvin Randall. That's what we said earlier about this Buck defense that they used to read more and stand on the line. And this year, they went to the aggressive approach, you know, hit anything that moves. And I'll tell you, that's what their defensive backs and their linebackers and everyone's doing. We saw Rick, Ricky Reynolds come up with a hit, knock the ball loose for the fumble. Then we just see Irvin Randall hit it, knock it loose. I'll tell you, this is a different defense than we've seen from Tampa for years. That joke there will get the team doctor some work. Tom Zack back in the pocket with a lot of time. Down the middle of Willie Call. He hangs on. A gain of 20. Rick Woods made the tackle on golf, but they move into Buck territory. You know, and one of those guys that brought that, I think, to this Buccaneer defense is Bobby Kemp. Remember him at Cincinnati? He played in sure. the Super Bowl with the Bengals, and, and he was a real hitter. I remember Forrest Gregg telling us about Bobby Kemp. He said, you know, he said, this guy is an unbelievable hitter. He said, he comes up, he said, and he'll hit you with everything he has. He said the only thing is he doesn't have a real big load. 
Donzak gets it out of the backfield to Anderson, who spins down for a gain of about eight. The ball comes out, but it was down. Not a fumble. Irvin Randall again, with help from Winston Moss, made the stop. Gain of seven. Hey, Mike Ditka here and his team, I don't think that they came in here ready for the fight that this defense has given them today, or this whole team has given them today. I think that, you know, the last game they played before the strike, they beat the Bucks, and it really wasn't a tough game for them. Of course, their early game, they had that great game against the Giants, but every game is a different game than the last one you played. You start at zero. Second and three. Buccaneers 38. That hits to Anderson on the counterplay. Anderson, he's gone. Touchdown, Bears. Uh, 38 yard scamper by Neil Anderson. Neil Anderson is the guy that's going to be the future of this team, and he's also the present right now as a fullback. They run that counter play. We see the off guard Tom Thayer pulling. Anderson has the ball out there, a la Walter Payton. But when he gets close to the defense, he puts it away, and whap, he just bursts right through it. There were a couple of moves in there that were vintage Peyton. Just looked just like Peyton. Mike Ditka said he's like 212 pounds and runs and hits like a 230 pounder. He has a great burst. He just showed the great burst. Kevin Butler for the extra point. And it's good. And as the game goes by, don't forget about that missed extra point or the blocked extra point by the Bears. They always come back to haunt you. Tampa Bay 20, the Chicago Bears 7. Good to have all the distractions out of the way, John. I know, and, and be back to real NFL football and, and see the real players doing the real things. And they, this isn't a bad way to start in Tampa I'll Bay. Say, <laughs> what a packed house they have had to sell out here in a couple of years, maybe longer than that. This one is a true sellout. Futrell takes it about the seven. Futrell gets to the 30. In return, Morrissey made the stop to bring him down. Let's go back and look at Anderson's touchdown. They will see Neil Anderson, and they talk about a counter. A counter means you fake like you're going that way, then you let your guard pull and get a block, then you come back. Now watch Anderson. Not only is fake, watch him fake to the right. He's going to throw his arm out there and swing. That lets Tom Thayer get in front of him. Thayer seals off. But once you block, he's going to get down here by Willie Gall. That's just enough to let him crack that burst through there. If you can just get those wide receivers to make some kind of contact. You've often said any long run, the wide receiver inevitably is the one who gets a good block or a block. That's right. If you would put like all the long runs that happen in a season, you put them all on one reel, you would see that there would be a block there on each one of them by a wide receiver. And Marino having a hot day for the Dolphins. They leave Buffalo 21 nothing. There's Testaverde. Yeah, he's charting now. We saw Mike Shula signaling in the plays. Testaverde's charting. He's charting left-handed. I didn't know he was left-handed. There's Brooks. Incomplete intended for Gerald Carter. And no flags down. Richie Phillips on the recovery, on the coverage. Hey, one thing, DeBerg started out with a hot hand, but the thing that has impressed me is that they've been able to give him time. Look, he's passed 17 times, has not been sacked once, and has only been knocked down. You know, that's after he throws it. Only knocked down two times. I tell you, that is something. One about DeBerg getting back, getting rid of the ball quickly, and then two is pass protection. He'll operate this time out of the spread formation. Third and nine. Hit from behind is DeBerg. And that looks like a fumble. His arm might have been coming forward. If so, it'll just be an incomplete pass. And that was Richard Dent that hit him from behind. I, I think Dent causes more fumbles on quarterbacks than anyone. Watch him. He'll be right here. He's going to come from behind the backside and hit DeBerg right there. 
Now DeBerg is back at about a seven step drop. Watch Dan. He just runs around Rob Taylor and whaps, hits him just as the ball was going forward. Now again, the rule is if his arm was going forward, incomplete pass. If not, it was a fumble. And they rule it a fumble. Steve McMichael was shaken up on the play. But he seems to have gotten rid of whatever cobwebs he had. And is okay. It was a fumble. And Garcia goes back to kick. His last one was a punt of 13 yards. Flag down. This one's a lot better. Fielded by McKinnon, and McKinnon gets away from a couple of tacklers, and now goes down. Flag down on the play, however. 33-yard punt. The turn is five. They knit 28. But let's see what the penalty marker is about. Against the Bucks, illegal motion. I would think they'd turn Legal it down. formation on the offense. They're going to accept the penalty. Five yards. They're going to accept down. it. I didn't think right. Well, that kind of surprises me, too, that they accept it unless they want him. Remember, Garcia, a couple punts ago, shanked one. Right. Shanked it so bad it went right into the stands. Maybe they feel that he's a little shaky. Now, I think two things go. If you take that penalty, then you should come with a punt block. Really put pressure on this guy. Linebacker Jeff Davis was shaken up for the Buccaneers on that punt coverage. And he's one of the keys to their defense. Garcia standing about two yards deep in his own end zone. I don't think they're sure they got enough men on the field. Well, I think they're bringing guys in. They're expecting, you see that overload down at the bottom of yep. the screen? They're expecting the block. To get and another shank off the side of his foot. Penalty marker down again. Well, that was a great call to do it, but then the Bears roughed the kicker, so the Buccaneers are going to get first down. I tell you, they, they got what they wanted, though, otherwise. Roughing the kicker. Yeah, they got everything they wanted because they got Garcia again to shank ball, one off. Running he shanked kicker, one, but then they hit him after he kicks it. You see, they run into the kicker right there. Durson. He's saying I didn't mean to do it, but that doesn't matter. What he's saying is that the punter left his foot up there. He didn't bring it down. There's not a rule against that, is there? Yeah. Yeah, there is a rule against that, as a matter of fact. I think they put it in a year ago that the, the, the punter can't fake it anymore. Let's see if that's not in there. If he, if he punts it and just leaves it up there to be hit, I don't know. He looked like he kicked it right in the face. Well, that's what Dorison saying that he left it up there. Yeah, I think it was right. I think Dorison did run into it. No question about him running into it. This is Wilder. Side for about four. Five caller. Richard Dent on the stop. We're at sold out Tampa Stadium in Tampa, Florida. Pat Summerall and John Madden. Tampa Bay Buccaneers lead the Bears 20 to 7 with 10.50 left to play in the first half. It'll be second and five. Five yard gain for Wilder. Again, Wilder. That's one tackle. Gets perhaps a yard before Singletary leads the pursuit. Steve DeBerg has sure had, had some first half. He's a guy that is really not a respected quarterback or as much respect as he should get. And he's a guy, he said, all you have to do if you want a great quarterback is get me because then you'll get one after that. He was at San Francisco. Then here comes Joe Montana. Then they go to Denver. Then here comes John Elway. Then he comes to Stamp Tampa. Then here comes Steve Young and now Vinny Testaverde. He's always been a guy who was able to move the ball from. Back to throw on third down, has time. Pass incomplete, almost intercepted, intended for Mark Carrier. Reggie Phillips, the defender, along with Todd Bell. Almost caught this one on the rebound. But he has double coverage there. The ball bounces up. Now watch as it comes down. 
He almost got it the second time. <laughs> he was down there at the bottom. He could have caught, went right through his hands as he's on his back. Garcia's got to be in somewhat of a state of shock. Two roughing the kicker penalties. One punt that went 13 yards. Another one off the other side of his foot. See the Bears come after him again. Well, that one went into the stands. I don't think I've ever seen that in an NFL no. game. And it wasn't just in the stands. It was about 15 rows up there. I hit a golf ball right there. Flag down. Garcia's punt goes straight up in the air almost. McKinnon feels it in zone 37. Gets one block. Stayed up 4 6 at the hang time, but a penalty marker down back at the line of scrimmage, and another one back on the kick return. There's a lot of flags. I see two down here on the return and one on the other end. I see three flags out there. Flags all over the place. Didn't drive. Out. Ben's had a busy first half. Illegal formation on the offense. 59 illegal block. Replay. Garcia's getting a lot of practice here lately. No, if he's in shock, he'll have time to come out of it or get deeper in it. If I were the Bears, I would still come on a block again. I think when you get a punter shaky, you just keep putting pressure on him. He's bound to catch one in a minute. Well, I think he caught that last one pretty good. He was up there with what, 4.6 hands? 4.6. The Bears aren't lined up in a, a punt block or a punt rush. scrimmage is the Buccaneer 24. Kennan now is back at his own 30. Finally hit one. Kennan at his own 35. It's got an alley and he could be off to the races. He just got to beat the punter. Dennis McKinnon touchdown bear. And they're right back in it. There's no penalty flag. McKinnon, I'm sure you will recall, did the same thing on opening Monday night when he brought a punt back for a touchdown, and now he's done it again from 65 yards. Well, there's the guy with courage. You remember Dennis McKinnon with a knee injury and surgery missed the entire season last year. He hadn't returned punts for four years. He came back this year said not only am I healthy but I want to be a punt returner again. And Mike Dick is that if you want it you can have it because we need it. I tell you McKinnon has always been a tough guy. I mean to be a, a punt returner you have to be a tough guy but he's always been one of those wide receivers who's a great block. Butler's extra point makes it 20 to 14 with 9 10 left to play in the first half. It's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 20. Chicago 14. Taste break. Yeah. 20 to 14. Book lead now has been cut to six. Was 20 to nothing. Butler set to kick off to Bobby Futrell. At the five. down right at the 20 yard line by Maurice Douglas and Dave Durison. I tell you that shows you what the Bears think here that that the momentum is changing. We have to go after him. So they put Dave Durison their starting safety. They put him on the kickoff coverage. And Mike Ditka is thinking there's nothing to wait around here for. We don't have to save anyone. Let's get after these guys. 859 left to play now in the first half. Deferred nine out of 19 two touchdowns. He started off with that hot hand, but it's cooled down considerably. Well, and I think he maybe just got tired. His arm could be tired. Maybe he got bored. He was so successful. Maybe the Bear defense has something to do with it, or is going to have something to do with it. I think that's the factor. Here's Wilder feeling his way over the right side. Get down by Wilbur Marshall. A gain of two. Houston is tied Atlanta. Indianapolis has gone ahead of the Patriots. Green Bay hopping on Detroit. Philadelphia 13 to 3 over the Cowboys. Brings up a second and eight situation here. 
Mark Carrier goes wide to the left. Daryl Carter comes wide to the right. Bird back to throw. Look out from behind his bench. There's a penalty flag down on the play. Second sack by the Bears. Both of them belong to Richard Dent. You know, I think DeBerg has taken a little drop, a deeper drop now. Number 72. Nothing on a quarterback. And that's the guy that has to block Dent. I think Dent probably causes more guys jumping. Here's Dent. See, he lines up wide. That makes that tackle a little edgy because he has to get out here to get him. And Dent just runs right off that corner and gets to Berg. But see, when he's that far out, you get a little antsy. So you want to get a jump. Now he's being blocked really right into DeBerg. Earlier, DeBerg was taking that three-step drop and that angle that Dent would take, he couldn't get to him at that pass. That brings up a second and 13. Comes back up at their own 17. Hand off to Smith. Smith gets up for good yardage, up to about the 25. Stopped by Todd Bell, gain of eight. But that was a plan that, that, that the Buccaneers came in with is, is to use either a three-step drop, which is about four or five yards, or a five-step drop with DeBerg, which is about six or seven yards. And that way, they can't get there from those wide corners away Dent comes. Now, if he goes a seven-step drop, then that's the angle that Dent is taking on his pass rush, and you'll get in trouble. And he's so quick that he can get there. Here comes the blitz in a hurry. They picked it up. The pass is complete to Gerald Carter. A gain of six stopped by Wilbur Marshall. It's enough for a first down. Singletary came firing up the middle. There's, of course, Jim McMahon loosening up his arm. I would bet that he's loosening up as I look at that now. When you wear that kind of cap, then you're loosening up for the second half. I don't think he's loosening up for this half. I'll bet you he's going to start the second half. Because if he if he were going to play now, he'd have a harder hat on. The contact is warming up with him, and he's got the hard hat on. Now Wilder over the left side, stopped by Dan Hampton. In case you wondered, because of the World Series, that Denver-Minnesota game has been moved to Monday night. Game seven of the World Series, of course, tonight. They can't all play there at the same time. Some of those guys, I watch that Herbeck. I, I mean, he could play both games. He could, he could hit you a home run and play nose tackle at night. He's about 245. I like that guy. That's the way. Boom, boom, you know, big guy swinging that lumber. Look out! That's Wilder. One of the Bear linebackers came blitzing and took himself right out of the area where the play was called. And you know, they always tell running backs, finish off your run. At the end, finish it off. I'll tell you, Wilder does that. Singletary gets blocked from the inside. It was Wilbur Marshall who run by it. But watch Wilder finish off on Todd Bell here. Watch him right at the end. Boom! You see that right arm hit 25, Todd Bell? That finished it off. Yeah, that's the way it is. Once I had a fullback, Uri Dixon, who got a 15-yard penalty for finishing the guy off. And he gets good yardage again. He gets six. Wilbur Marshall made the stop. Well, this could be the thing we we're talking about. You start passing to loosen them up. That's a 49er approach. You pass in order to run. So they started passing. Now they start running. That was that counter trade play that the Redskins made famous. Remember John Riggins running that thing for years? Everybody has a version of that now. Pull the off guard and tackle, get the pull back in behind him. Second and four. Four and a half minutes left to play in the first half. Smith in motion. Wilder gets to work again. Doesn't get much this time. Team picked up three. That'll bring up a third and short situation. Stopped by Otis Wilson. You know, the interesting thing is they're running mostly to the left, and that's at, you know, Richard Dent, and Wilbur Marshall, and William Perry over there. They're staying away from this side of McMichael and Hampton and Otis Wilson. I don't know which way I'd go. Third and about a yard and a half. 
Well, one good thing at running at the pass rusher, and that being dense, you kind of calm them down a little, make them anchor in and not get so wide. They used to always say that about Deacon Jones. They say it about Lawrence Taylor. Single setback. It took too much time. That had to be an audible. Third down. I'll tell you, that is a big play because they were in short yardage, Pat. They had third and a yard. And now you go third and six. So you go from a short yardage play to a, now a shotgun. That's what Mike Shula is showing them. Everyone says that Mike Shula someday will make a great coach. That he knows the game. He's in the game. Of course, he played in college for Ray Perkins. And, and Ray had to cut him in the last cut. So it was the toughest thing he ever did. He couldn't wait to get him back. He said he never, never makes a mistake. 36. Come on, Come on. Bird, complete. Complete. Solomon Miller sitting down, and a flag is down. Whether how a quarterback gets that much time against a bear defense, the penalty is against the bear, so that'll be a first down. Defense lined up in the neutral die, the neutral zone, decline the penalty, first down. But watch this, the bird has time not only to throw, but to pump, bring it back. That is a heck of a play. You have to have strong hands to do that because that wasn't a pump fake. He went to throw that thing, stopped in the middle of it, held it, brought it back, cocked it again, and zipped it in there. He's got huge hands as the Buccaneers go on a quick count. Smith tried to get around the corner, knocked out of bounds for no gain, or perhaps one, two maybe, by Todd Bell. You know, he is, he is quite an athlete. He was a pole vaulter in high school to Bird. And they say that he's a, a great tennis player. In fact, when he plays tennis, they call him DeBorg. <laughs> and I've played golf with him. He's got a good golf swing. Well, they could call him like De Nicholas in golf. Good. Or if he wrestles, they could call him De Hulk. You could have just put Da in front of it, and that's what he is. <laughs> he started his career in high school as a center. Who would have thought? <laughs> he made a wise choice. And drop right in the hands. I think it's Singletary. He had it and wanted to take off with it. That's one of the things the Bears will talk about at halftime that DeBerg is starting to come close to throw interceptions. They've had opportunities of Bears. They've had so many here. Remember, Otis Wilson had one earlier. Here, Singletary has one. And I'm sure that they can take that as a positive thing and say, hey, look, guys. It's just a matter of time. Bird got hit by Dent. Not a severe jolt. That's enough to knock about three yards. Look where yep. Dent is, where DeBerg ended up. Well, that's a severe jolt. Timeout Buccaneers. DeBerg goes over to the sideline. 2.44 left to play in the first half. Tampa Bay, 20. The Bears, 14. Next week, of course, full schedule of NFL activity here on CBS. Washington visits Buffalo. Starts with the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern time. I think there's one of the, the good teams. We see that they're beating the Jets now. But, you know, I always thought they're kind of like the Rodney Dangerfields of football. Everyone forgets about the Redskins. For some reason, they don't always get that respect. I mean, they talk about the Giants, they talk about the Bears, or the 49ers, the Cleveland Browns. And you forget the Redskins, and they just sit there and win. And they're a very solid, well-coached football team. The rest of the schedule, Tampa Bay goes to Green Bay. New Orleans, Atlanta, San Francisco, Rams, Minnesota, Seattle, Detroit, Denver. John and I will be in Anaheim for the 49er visit to the Rams. be a pretty good trip for you. Well, it's all the way across. It's as far as you can go in this country. Coast to coast, and then we'll be back in Green Bay. We'll be crisscrossing this country. We'll we'll take a look at it and see what's going on. We'll let you know. We'll be qualified to teach 
And you probably want to know what's going on like in uh, Las Vegas, New Mexico. Probably. I didn't uh, know there was such yeah, a place. Yeah, yeah, there's a Las Vegas. Yeah, we go right through. Las Vegas, Albuquerque. John, of course, does all that by bus. Third down and eight to go. Ball at the bear 29. The bird operates out of the shotgun formation, puts Carter in motion. Pass is complete and then dropped. It won't be enough for a first down. The Bears recover it anyway, I believe, and now they say he was down. Dent was all over DeBerg again. He had to throw it early. I tell you, Dent is one of the best pass rushers in the NFL, and, I, and when you get back there where he can come off that corner, then it's going to be a long day for you. You see, that time, he starts from the outside, and he comes up the middle. He came up the middle on a stunt that time. But usually, he comes from the outside, and that's that's when he gets to the quarterback. The Berg is waiting for the two-minute warning notification to take place, and now it does. And he strolled over to the sideline to talk with Ray Perkins. They're going to try a field goal. At least Igwe Buike is in the game. They're up by six. Halftime, Brent and Irv with scores and highlights. Also back to reality. Replacement players in a roundtable discussion as they make their transition away from the NFL. Coming up at the half, two minutes remaining. 46-yard field goal with a little help from the win for Donald Igwe Buike, whose mother is watching him play for the first time ever today. And he got it from 46 yards out. Makes the score of the Bucks 23, the Bears 14 with 156 left first half. The stadium where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers lead the Bears 23-14 in the closing minute and a half or so of the first half. Beautiful, beautiful day. And a sellout crowd. You know, you think of a beautiful day, you wonder about that. Bear defense. They've been on the field a long time in the first half. They train up there in Chicago where it's a lot colder. I don't know. If there's a little heat here. I don't know if they're going to start getting a little tired down there. That's Gentry. Hit. Plays on his feet. Fumble. One of the Bears picked it off in midair. Sean Smith got the ball after Gentry's fumble in midair. Number 97. Watch well, this thing just pop out of there. He's fighting for yardage, and that's one of the things that's tough. He gets hit from behind. The ball just pops right out of the air. <laughs> and this guy was going to block, and then the next minute, he gets it. It's his ball. The guy that hit him from behind was uh, Solomon, Solomon Miller. Miller. Yeah. The wide receiver. First and 10 Bears. They start from their own 22-yard line. Uh, a minute 45 left to play in the first half. Tom Zack is still the quarterback. Tampa Bay has had the ball 19 minutes and 50 seconds. You know, that's what I was talking about. And, you know, that bare defense, I mean, there's some big guys. They've been out there 20 minutes. Now, it's not real hot. It's 82 degrees here. But when you're coming out of someplace where you've had the cooler weather and then you come here, if you're a, a big guy with all that equipment, you start to feel it. The referee and his staff had a little conference. I'm not sure what that was about. We're told they were reviewing the spot where the ball should be spotted after the ball was knocked loose from Gentry. Picked off by Sean Smith. It was correct where they put it initially. Here's Tom Zach. Screen pass to Peyton. Fumble. And the Buccaneers come out of there motioning. They got it, and they did. Scott Brantley made the recovery. Scott Brantley was beaten out by Irvin Randall this year. Of course, he's been the starter there. 
Watch this. They get a good pass rush, and then it's a screen to Peyton. Again, Peyton has a hole there. He has the ball. He was holding it out. Then he gets hit from behind by John Cannon, and that ball just jumped right out of his hand. That's why, you know, he will carry the ball outside when there's no one around him. And that's why when you don't see, when you get from behind, he thinks there's no one around him. He never wow. saw John Cannon. He didn't see him. No way he could have. He had a rear view mirror on his helmet. So it's first and 10 bucks at the Bear 24. Jeff Smith, the move man. The bird trying to go for more. And does down the middle. Has a man. Had him wide open. Gerald Carter had a touchdown. Flag down on the play. That's in the area of holding. But they, that's a timing pass. The bird just boom, 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 quack, throw that ball. Holding number 79, 10 yards, first down. All against Conrad Goody. Conrad Goody's the left guard. He would be the guy who's, who's blocking against the fridge right here. You see him, in fact, I guess that's what they call he Just before the fridge collapsed him, he put his right hand up on part of that jersey. That penalty would take him out of field goal range. He'll make it first and 20. They're showing blitz. Here they come. Referred quickly outside, past Puck. And out of bounds at about the 32 yard line. Puck by Calvin McGee. Gain of only three, and DeBerg felt the pressure. Well, you know, DeBerg was injured in the last Bear game. He hurt his knee. Without the strike, he wouldn't have been able to play the next week. And I think he got one on the knee there. He's going to get the blitz right up the middle. You see it coming here? He gets hit there, and it looks like he got his knee. Got clobbered by Steve McMichael. Well, he, and in fact, it was McMichael who hit him in the first game that he had to leave. Then he came back in. He's wearing a big brace on me today. Second and 17. They're not showing blitz this time. Hampton on a stunt on the left side takes him down. That's the way you get to him. What happens is here's Hampton here. Now instead of going here where you can't get there, you erase that, and then he comes underneath, and then you take him at that shorter angle. You see, Hampton starts out there like he's going wide, and watch him come underneath. Then he finds a hole here, just jumps right over the back and into DeBerg. And I think that's the way you have to rush him. You can't get there from the outside. You have to come up the middle. Pressure up the middle. That was a secret. I know you felt in rushing Dan Fouts. I think DeBerg is the same type of guy. By Otis Wilson this time. And nobody touched him. Buccaneers started at the Bear 24. And I'll tell you, they're wondering what. Now, Otis Wilson is a down lineman here. He just runs right in and, make, and, and meets the Berg back there. On the pass rush, Otis Wilson is the outside guy. The tackle looked in. Ron Heller, then he just let Wilson run right by him. I think maybe the numbers confused him. Well, they always do that. Every, yeah. every third down this year, Otis Wilson becomes a defensive lineman. Berg would appear to be a little angry. They hit first and 10 at the Bear 24. Now they have to punt from the Bear 48. Well, I think he's angry that they just let him come, that they should know that because that's the way the, they, they play their nickel package the Bears do. They have Otis Wilson plays left end, then McMichael is the left tackle, then Hampton moves to the right tackle, and then Dent's the right end. That's their four-man line pass rushers. It's not something that should be unfamiliar. That's what the Berg say. Yeah. McKinnon standing back at the 10. He's already returned one for a touchdown, his second of the year, which is a Bear team record. Not just his, a Bear team record. Two touchdowns in the same year. Coming after this one. Four seconds left on the clock. High kick chases McKinnon back to the three. He drops it, picks it up, and is down at the 10. 
There's a flag down near it to kick her again. And he gets up limping. It's gonna, gonna be roughing the kicker again. This is when you get a little shell shock, not only a punter, but you start getting Pushing shell shock to rush anymore. Running into the kicker, the defense. Two men hit him. Five yards, first down. I think only one man hit him. Doesn't make any difference how many hit him. If one hits him. Durson. Yeah, Ben Bryce said two hit him. Watch here, it's Durson that really hits him. He figures the last time I didn't hit him, this time I'll get him, but really it doesn't do any good to rush if you're going to come up with a penalty. That's the third time they've been called for roughing the kicker. In one half of football. And so Steve DeBerg and the offensive unit come back on the field. And he'll take over there at the Bear 43. Just looking at that defense standing down there, they're starting to look tired. They'll be glad to see it when halftime comes. They're trying to get some oxygen in those bodies. And I'll tell you, that's maybe one way to get this Bear defense is to just keep them on the field. And put them in hot weather. 23-14 the score. Here's the bird again. Wilson and they swarm on him again. McMichael, Wilson and Dent all in the area of the fourth sack for Steve DeBerg. We were talking about Otis Wilson being a down lineman. Here he is on first down. You see here, he's not a linebacker. He's down right here. Coming, just coming on a pass rush again. He runs right by Ron Heller. See, he's down there in a stance. He just runs to the outside and just sprints and beats him to the quarterback. He and McMichael arrived at just about the same time. And they are frustrating Steve DeBerg. Steve may need a hot bath tonight. Don't forget next Saturday college football coming up. Syracuse against Pittsburgh live at 2.30 Eastern time. Syracuse ranked number nine before the polls are out this week. I'm sure they'll move up. I'll tell you, you know, with that, that win they had a week ago against Penn State, they look like a, a power, this Syracuse Orange. They might also have a lot of conversation, of course, about the Heisman Trophy. They might have one. Don McPherson. DeBerg under pressure, and lately there has been an awful lot of pressure. Well, you see, the knockdowns are the same as the sacks. He had, he's been knocked down four times, and those are all sacks. Second and 20 now as he operates out of the shotgun formation. There's Ozzie. Oh, on a draw play to Wilder. Wilder as another penalty flag comes flying out. Gained five yards, did Wilder. This bear defense may be getting a little tired, but they're also taking over the game right here. But the Buccaneers have had the ball in good field position. They just can't do anything with it except go backwards. Offensive holding, number 72, 10 yard, second down. Rob Taylor. You know, there must be something, John, about that bear uniform, because when we did the replacement game against the New Orleans, even though it wasn't the real Bears, they played with the same kind of temperament, the same kind of aggressive nature. Well, I think a lot of that has to be attributed to the coaching staff. And I think that's where it comes from. I mean, you know, Vince Tobin, the defensive coordinator, I think it all starts there with the organization. I think with Mike Ditka, the type of person he is, the way he coaches, the things that he wants, the tradition of the Bears. And I think there is a lot to that. When you put that uniform on, that's what you become. Second and 30 plus. Somebody jumped offside. I think it was Dent. DeBerg fires pass incomplete. Down to six seconds on the clock in the first half. But Dent jumped offside. Even the penalty flag looks better on grass. I'll tell you, it does. That's a good one. Five yard penalty, second down. Yeah, I think that that was on Richard Dent. Rob Taylor, who's blocking Richard Dent, I think has had three penalties in this first half. And you know, if you look at that, great defensive players will draw penalties. 
And I think Dent is one of those guys. He just makes that tackle jumping. Howie Long? Howie Long does it. Lawrence Taylor does it. They get there, and the guy is thinking more of the guy they have to block than of the snap count. Berg again out of the sprint. Another flag down. DeBerg is down. And that's going to be against the Bears again. This time, Otis Wilson, the end on this side, jumped off sides. Two seconds remaining now in the Defense first half. Defense offside, 55. Five yards, second down. Was Otis Wilson, second down. They still need about 26. I'll tell you, this Bear defense is looking forward to halftime, I'll Don't guarantee you, know. you. So is Mike Dicka. Penalties. The Bears nine times for 53 yards. The Bucks eight for 50. The yards don't show up in three of those penalties against the Bears. Three of them for roughing the kicker. Liver. Gets it outside to Wilder. Wilder's taken down by Otis Wilson. And a welcome rest for the weary. And both teams head for their respective locker rooms. That's the end of the first half with the score. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers 23. The Chicago Bears 14. Said I'm either going to slip Jim McMahon in in the second quarter sometime or start him in the second half. So I think his starting the second half really isn't because the Bears offense didn't do it at Tomsack. I think that was planned. Dennis Gentry feels that line drive kick off and was cut down at the 28-yard line. 24-yard return. He's stopped by Kevin Murray. And Jim McMahon, for the first time in almost a year, is the Bear quarterback. tell you something I I think that the obviously when he wasn't in there isn't in there the Bears miss him I think all football misses McMahon well there are 15,000 Chicago Bear fans here today and they're making a lot of noise for Jim McMahon Neil Anderson and Walter Payton behind him Warhead moves in motion pitches it back to Payton Got a couple. But the pursuit was excellent by the Buccaneers. McMahon looking over for the signal from the sideline. Tom Zack played the entire first half, and Jim McMahon starts the second. Well, you know, Jim McMahon has passed all the tests of being able to throw the ball, and of course, the one he has to pass now is can he take that hit? He was playing basketball, and the fridge hit him in a basketball game, hit his shoulder. He came off of that one. But he hasn't been hit yet in a year, too. He said it's a little sore, but not from the injury. Here's McMahon from behind, gets it outside just at the last second. They might say he's in the grass, but it's in the direction of Walter Payton. Winston Moss put the heat on. Well, they're going to find out right away whether or not he can take a hit. And the toughest hit for any quarterback is that blind side, the side that he doesn't see right there where Moss is coming from. Moss grabs his left shoulder, spins him around, and McMahon gets rid of the ball. I got the impression a little bit, John, that Moss might have had a chance to unload on him and didn't. Well, Moss is a rookie. Obviously, he hasn't played against McMahon. He's probably read a, bit, a lot about him. Third down now, and it's Gentry in motion. McMahon operates out of the spread, has time, and he comes out of it. And is tripped up, and he's very close to a first down. A pickup of eight, and I think he got it. I think he does, too. That's one thing about Jim McMahon, and that's what he says in the other places. He sees so much more. And the one criticism of Tom Sack was that he doesn't see like McMahon. McMahon sees every. He sees this hole right here. Now, look, he just takes a peek to the left to see where that first down is, and bap, he slides to get just over it. And then he's looking. He's aware. He's a very aware person. Not just on the field. Oh, he's aware wherever he goes. I'll guarantee you that. Back to throw again is McMahon. 
with time swings it outside to Peyton. Peyton might have gotten a yard out of the whole thing. Irvin Randall was the first man there. Maybe no gain. You know, he's thrown the ball to Peyton. He's handed it to Peyton. The last time he was there, Peyton was the guy. Now he has Neil Anderson back there who he hasn't played with. He has Ron Morris as one receiver who he hasn't played with. He's got to get to know those guys. Heck, they've been on strike and stuff. Morris comes out wide to the left this time. Golf to the right. He's looking at golf. He has golf. Pretty good throw there. That had some zip on it. It's funny how you come in and you're trying to get confidence. So you work the guys that you're used to. We said he, he threw to Walter Payton. Now he comes right back and he throws to Willie Gall. Now that's pretty good for Gall. You know, that's something that he has to do is catch the ball with his hands out in front of his body. Well, he really had no choice there. It was so high. Everyone knows that he can go deep. And yep. Everyone knows that he has the speed. He can do those things. But to be a great receiver, he has to catch more of those things. First and ten bears at midfield. McMahon on first down. Down the middle complete for Ron Morris. And that's another good throw. And now he has the confidence. I mean, he didn't come in like the old Matt Mack. He came in and he was just saying, I wonder what this is going to feel like. And now you can just look at his face and feel it. He's hit Peyton on a little short one. He comes back rap. He hits ball. Then he goes a little deeper to Morris, just working the ball right down the field. And as he does, you can just see a confidence come in underneath that number nine in the front. First down Bears at the buck 25. That they lose 23-14. There's Anderson in motion. McMahon rolls, throws to Anderson incomplete. Hit by Ricky Woods. One thing about McMahon, when he when he started practice and last week, the Bears came back a week ago Thursday, and he was worried because he was throwing spirals. You know, he's always had a little flutter in that ball. <laughs> Is it how you feel? <laughs> Sometimes I feel too good. My ball's starting to spiral. No one knows how to catch him. He can pick it up second and ten from the 25. Who is right on the flank? It's Morris in motion. Back to throw. Here comes the blitz after McMahon. He gets rid of it. Gets complete to Emery Moorhead. Picked up four. Scott Brantley made the stop. You know, the interesting thing about this drive, Pat, is how McMahon comes in. We talk about his awareness. He's thrown a ball to Walter Payton. He's thrown one to Galt. He's thrown one to Morris, his two wide receivers. Then he goes to Moorhead, his tight end. He has used all his weapons, both wide receivers, tight end, and running back, all on this drive. Keep them all happy. That's what you call spreading it around. Third down at six at the 21. And out of the spread this time. and Holmes is coming on the outside. Covert just looked at him. It looked like it was a sprint to that side and no one blocked Holmes. I don't know what Jim Covert was doing, but if we look at it again, here's Covert. He blocks, he looks this way and whap, Holmes just runs right by him. Look at him, Covert doesn't even block him. Kevin Butler from 46 yards with Jim Harbaugh holding. So the Buccaneer lead remains 23 to 14. That, that was going to be that shuffle pass. Watch Gentry. He comes in motion. McMahon was starting here. It was going to pitch in here and have a screen develop. They didn't block Holmes, and he come. And say, I don't know if, if Covert was supposed to block him or if he was supposed to get in the screen. Buccaneers take over at their own. 29-yard line. James Wilder, the ball carrier, over the right side for a six-yard gain. 
stopped by Otis Wilson. Ray Perkins. He put him through a rigorous training camp, a rigorous week of practice. Four hours Monday, three and a half hours Tuesday. He said the first day it was just, there was no noise at all. Just like a tomb. And during the week, everything loosened up. Deberg. Incomplete. Carrier, the intended receiver. Let's go for an NFL update to Brent Musburger in New York. Well, Pat, Philadelphia adding to its lead on the Dallas Cowboys. They've scored two touchdowns, kicked a pair of field goals, and right now it is 2013. Randall Cunningham having a big day. He has been the difference so far in the game. Let's go back to Pat and John. Tampa Bay leading the Bears 23 to 14. We're in the third quarter with 9-11 left to play. Third down for the Bucks. They need four for a first. Wilder behind DeBerg. Hall is the man in motion. DeBerg retreats. Has the man open down the middle. It's Calvin McGee. And McGee is out of bounds at the Bear 31-yard line. Stopped by Todd Bell. 33-yard pickup. Yeah, here's the guy when Ray Perkins came, he had a, a mini camp. And McGee came in and he weighed 282 pounds. And Ray Perkins says, I'm going to move you to guard. He got down to 245 pounds because he wants to play tight end. And he's a guy who is just a bear buster. This is Jeff Smith. Inside the bear 30, stopped by Dan Hampton, picked up four. Singletary also involved. I'm impressed still with this with the way Tampa Bay is approaching this bear defense and you know, for years people have had trouble trying to figure out what they do and to control it and take care of it and I think that they've done as good a job against the bear defense as I've seen. Well it certainly hasn't surprised them. Pass protection broke down at the end of the first half. And the bird calling it automatic. Six seconds left on the 30-second clock. He does get rid of it. To Calvin McGee, and that'll be enough for a first down. Stopped by Reggie Phillips. There's Jim McMahon. Can't be too disappointed with his first series. First and ten, Tampa Bay. Walter Payton. Playing perhaps his last visit to this stadium, and all the road games around the league. He hasn't said definitely, just to perhaps. Well, someday he would like to own a franchise in the NFL. And I bet he does. Draw play, middle to Wilder. William Perry stopped him after a pickup of three. That's funny, we were talking about Ray Perkins and the offense and how he likes to uh, you, know, you know how he is the offensive coordinator himself. He tried to get Dan Henning when he was fired at Atlanta to be the offensive coordinator here. And he didn't get him. Dan Henning went to the Redskins. And Perkins said he would do it himself. And I'll tell you, he, you know, the other thing to him is a stern guy and all that. He does have a sense of humor and he has a fine offensive mind. Here they come after the bird. Nobody picked up the outside blitzers led by Wilbur Marshall. That's five sacks. Well, you know, the tough thing, you put the tight end on the side of Dent. Now, you think that's going to help, but all that does is bring Marshall over to that side. And it brings Wilson, it brings the strong safety, so that's what happened there. They got Dent blocked, and here comes Wilbur Marshall. And he's quick. Just as quick as Dent. Third and 16, the ball's at the bare 23. They're in field goal range. Inside handoff to Wilder, and Wilder gets down inside the 20 to move it a little bit closer. Pick up a four, stopped by Singletary. And Donald Igwe Buike will come on. Here we're always talking about the way you run. It's the same thing with a draw play. 
after you get pressure and you run a draw play, you always run it at the point where you're getting the most pressure. Make them stay quiet if you can. Most of their running has been to the left side, and the draw play was to the left. From 37 yards out. Got it. Let's move back further ahead at 26 to 14 with six minutes, one second left, third quarter. 26-14 at Tampa Stadium. The Buccaneers lead the Bears. Igwe Buike will kick off with the wind at his back. Dennis Gentry and Thomas Sanders back deep for the Bears. to the 32. They've done a splendid job of returning kicks today. Steve Holloway brought him down. Holloway. Atlanta 20, Houston 20, third quarter. Cincinnati over Pittsburgh by 10. Buffalo coming back against the Dolphins. The Jets lead Washington now 13-7. I figured it'd be a very high scoring game. First down, Bears. Jim McMahon, the quarterback. They operate from their own 33-yard line. Starts Anderson in motion and gives to Anderson coming back. That's an unusual play. Anderson starts in motion, and they run that counter play from that motion. That is an interesting play. That's another form of a counter play. But as you said, Pat, they just did it off motion. Let's watch it here. We'll see the motion. Anderson starts this way, passes McMahon, pats him to let him know when he's passing, stops, and then comes back. Watch him. He starts in motion, and he just lets him know he's there. Then he stops, and they let the guard and tackle and tight end pull. Straight ahead was Anderson that time. One or two. Might be a little bit short of the first down. He stopped by Kevin Murphy. You know, the interesting thing about that counter that we just watched by Neil Anderson is that when you go in motion and run the counter off the motion, that you can pull not only your off guard and back, but you can also pull the tight end. Get three of them out Yeah, in front. so then, then you got a, uh, what you call a triple load. And you also get a first down. On the next play. Both carries by Neil Anderson. First down, Bears, they move up closer to midfield. Operate this time from their own 43. Time of possession, Tampa Bay over 25 minutes. The Bears with just 14. Well, the last time they had the ball, and McMahon was in there. He had nine plays for 52 yards. Of course, they didn't get anything out of it. Out to Peyton. Jackie Walker. One thing that Ray Perkins does, he's got a fine crew of linebackers, and he likes to give them all some playing time. He keeps them all in the game, keeps them rotating, wants to keep them fresh, which is a good idea. Well, he was saying yesterday that he thinks the strength of his team that he's building now is his defense. As he said specifically, it's a linebackers group. But as you say, He's played six or seven linebackers today and just keep putting them in and out, keeping them fresh, and, and they run all over the field, these guys. Second and seven. Morris and Galt, the wide receivers, and Anderson again in motion. Man sprints out to his right. Chased by one man, throws back, crosses his body to Dennis McKinnon, and that would indicate that his shoulder is okay, because that's a tough throw. I was going to say, and he also got hit. You know, the toughest thing that they have to do with that shoulder is run to the left and throw, but the big thing, and his big test, is how is he going to take a hit? Let's watch how he takes a whap, he throws, and there he gets one. I think after you come off an injury like that, you get up and you just test all your parts. So far, the parts seem to be functioning. First and 10 at the 45. They're in Buccaneer territory. Don't show blitz. Three-man 
front. Here comes the counter play again. The ball is loose. It was Anderson. And they're off to the races, but they're going to say he was down. And now the ball is loose again, and the Bears get it back. But it's all going to be bring it back where it all started to break apart. John Cannon. Well, that 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 was that interesting thing. See, they're pulling all side. Guard, tackle, tight end. The thing that kills that though is the penetration. When you get penetration in there, then you can't get by. But watch them. They start that way. Here comes a guard, tackle, tight end. There goes the penetration. You have to block that backside before your back gets over there with that triple load. They don't leave anybody to block that backside. You don't have any guys. There's no guys left. Second and 17. If you have all the guys here, you bring all the guys here, then you don't have any guys there. Did Hilgenberg stand there with his hands on his hip. He did an interesting thing. Listen to this one. Jay Hilgenberg comes out in the pregame warm-up. Has a long head, uh, uh, head of hair on him. So he goes in the locker room. He thinks he has too much hair, so he wants a haircut. So he has Mike Tomsack in the locker room today before the game give him a haircut. So much for the game plan. He just got a haircut. McMahon is down under pressure from Mike Stinsrud and John Cannon. That's the Bucks' third sack. That's that pressure, the first thing, he gets that pressure up the middle, then from the outside. Watch him, it comes right up the middle from Stensrud. That makes him put the ball down. And when he puts the ball down, he has to bring everything else with him. But it's that first guy that breaks up the middle. The man was looking, then he had to put the ball down. You get that pressure up the middle, you make a lot of things happen. Either the quarterback's got to come out, or you got to designate somebody else to help. Gentry in motion. Pressure on McMahon. He is hit this time in the pass. He's intercepted. Rick Woods. Woods has got a couple of blockers in front of him, and he gets back into fair territory. Neil Anderson finally stopped him. McMahon really took a joke. I'll tell you, McMahon takes a joke. And Dennis McKinnon takes a jolt on the other end after the interception. Watch McMahon. He gets sandwiched there. He looks like he's okay. Then Dennis McKinnon got it down on the other end. He's just oh, getting up. Oh, boy. McKinnon really got walloped by Bobby Kemp. Stadium's alive as the Buccaneers after the interception. Have it first and ten. Turnovers. The Bears four. Bucks none. They bird back to Wilder. Wilder has no place to go. Singletary stopped him after he got a couple, perhaps. Must have been a fumble. Now, I don't remember. The Buccaneers yet running a play to the right. You know, it seems like every play that they've run has been to the left side of their offense. They run the draw there, and, yeah. they've, and they've run all their runs to that side. Second down and eight. They're 45. 35 seconds left to play in the third quarter. The bird back to throw. Incomplete. Had it and lost it. Mark Carrier. I'll tell you who did a good job on this as a center. Once Singletary up here, he's ready to jump. That's tough. You got to snap the ball and then boom, get him and stop him right there in the hole. Watch Randy Grimes. You see that? Get that snap. Snap that ball up there and then come off on that same shoulder and get him. Brings up a third down situation, third and eight. 27 seconds left now in the third quarter. Bucks leading 26-14, and here they come after him again. The ball comes out of there, but he was in the grasp and down. Richard Dent again 
led the surge by the defense and DeBerg had no chance whatsoever a loss of 12. Durison also on the rush. I tell you, they're going to they're going to bring them. You see up on top from that right side. They have an overload. They have four guys coming from that side. Dent again taking that looping outside rush and getting there. Of course, he has Otis Wilson, Singletary, the whole bunch of them looked like they were there in that play. See back to punch. Better. That's McKinnon at the eight. He's already returned one for a touchdown. This one is well covered. Garcia's best punt of the day, one of 48 yards. Stayed up there four seconds. Nine yard return by McKinnon. One second left, third quarter. And a reminder next Saturday here on CBS at 2 30 Eastern Time, you'll have a chance to see Syracuse. And maybe have a look at how good they really are against Pittsburgh at Pitt Stadium. Pitt's record five and two. And Syracuse, that most impressive, impressive win two weeks ago over Penn State. The Bears with one second to go in the third quarter with Jim McMahon, the quarterback. And back to throw. Intended for Morris incomplete. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers 26, the Bears 14. We now pause for a word from your local station. Pat Summerall, John Madden. We're getting ready to start the fourth quarter at Tampa Stadium. Sold out. And enjoying their Buccaneers for once. Jim McMahon, the Bear quarterback, second and ten on the 18. McMahon will have the wind at his back. The outside intended for Henry Moorhead, incomplete, covered by Bobby Kemp. The other thing that surprises me, Pat, and is so unlike the Bears, is that they've thrown today twice as much as they run. They've thrown 23 passes. They've only run the ball 11 times. Usually, they're flip-flop to that. Another surprising thing is the amount of pressure the front three for the Buccaneers have been able to put on the Bear quarterback. Yeah, that surprised me because I, I didn't think it would happen. I know Mike Ditka said last night that Jim Colbert is going to have his hands full with Ron Holmes. And After McMahon, and they got him down. Four sacks for the Bucks. That's charge led by John Cannon. And Dan Cilio. I think that's the thing that we're talking about. Now they get up there, they have five men on the line of scrimmage. They have a stunt there in the middle, so they break free up the middle. Again, that makes McMahon put the ball down, and then they can swarm him. But that was a five-man defensive line, and that really put the pressure on him. Wagner will have to punt out of his own end zone. Futrell back deep for the Bucks. Handles it at midfield. Flag is down. They got a block, an illegal block back at midfield. Futrell gets it all the way down inside the Bear 30, but they'll bring it back. 40 yard punt, 25 yard return. They net 15, but there's a flag on the play. Two you flags. can see it coming, yeah, and they're yeah. both against the same guy, the clip. Illegal block on the receiving team, number 22, 10 yards, first down against Rod Jones and you could see it coming you could see you could see the ball carrier coming one way or the punt returner going one way Rod Jones coming to block watch 22 right there and you can see him zero in on him and then instead of hitting him in the front he got his head behind and that's the penalty that is a tough thing though I mean you aim for the guy he moves a little and instead of inches your head in front your inches your heads behind you wind up hitting him in the back it was Dennis Gentry that he hit, by the way. And then anything that happens doesn't count because they bring it back. First and ten, the Bucks backed up to their own 39 now. They lead 26-14. Paul oh, was the man in motion. This is Wilder. Everything 
was knocked backwards. Wilbur Marshall made the tackle. Well, they got penetration over on that side. That's the first play that I can remember running to the right side. And they're going to end up with about a five-yard loss. So maybe that's why they don't run to the right side. Maybe that's wise. They might have run one more with Smith early. But they certainly have favored this direction. New Orleans has gone ahead of San Francisco. Hey, that, I think, is a good organization led yep. by Jim Finks and a good coaching staff led by Jim Mora. On second and 11, DeBerg fires. Complete. It's Mark Carrier. He was down. Reggie Phillips. Are they going to bring this back? I think they're just bringing it back to the point that he caught it. I, I think they're saying it was a legal catch, but that he was down there. It should be enough if that's where they mark it for a first down. That's where they're marking it right there, and they're saying that this part of it is illegal. You know, Mark Carrier is a rookie. And when he was in training camp, they came in the night before and told him he was going to start the next day. And then he said he woke up the next morning and thought he was dreaming. At midfield, the Berg has a first down. Calling an automatic. Back to throw it. And hung on to by Mark Carrier. That's quite a catch. And a gain of eight. That's Steve Jackson was the defender. They're still given time. Let's watch in here and watch Conrad Goody going against the fridge. See, he gets square into him. You better plant those legs because you're going to get a push. He does that. You have to keep that push out of DeBerg's face. He just turned the push a little so DeBerg could find a lane. Wilder gets inside the 35 to about the 33 before uh, Todd Bell and Mike Singletary bring him down. 70,747. I'll tell you one thing I see now, Pat. I see this Bear defense getting worn down. And uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't blame you know conditioning a strike or anything. I think. I think you get out there and you play. And I think these Tampa Bay Buccaneers have done it. I don't think it's the layoff. I don't think there's any excuses. I think these guys, for three quarters so far, have gone out there and whipped them. The Berg again. Calling an audible. Dropped the ball on the exchange and got it back. Singletary jumped on top of him. That figure I gave you a minute ago, 70,747, is the attendance. Stadium seats just over 72. There were a few no-shows, but still... Marvelous crowd. I think when Ray Perkins gets settled in here and gets his team built up, and we can see what he's already started here, I think this is going to be a, a hotbed of professional football. I, I think this will be a, a, a real place and a real scene. Here comes the blitz. The bird gets it off. Pass complete to Hall. Now for an update, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Well, Pat, John talked about the Tampa scene. There's going to be one in New Orleans, too. They were down 17-3. This was the punt block. And look at him. Dash underneath it. And Alvin tolls in. And now the Saints lead San Francisco 19-17. And, Pat, the Saints could be tied for first in that division if this holds up. Back to Pat. So could the Buccaneers be tied for first if they can hang on here. And they lead 26-14. The Berg had some time and overthrew Mark Carrier. Richard Dent over talking to the officials, and I'm sure he was claiming he was held, and I do now see a flag down. And if it's Dent, he was probably talking about number 72. Rob Taylor was the guy that was holding him. And that has to be, if it is against Rob Taylor, that would be his fourth or fifth today. And like we said in the first half. Number 72, it'll be 10 yards, third down. I tell you, those those guys, those pass rushers, uh, as we said earlier, they draw those. They not, not only draw the holding we just saw, but they draw all those offsides and illegal motions. 
and they watch them more carefully. There it is. You're going to see it right here. Here's Rob Taylor here, and here's Dent coming here. You see, when Dent gets outside, that makes it tough because now he has to get set up. Then Dent gives him the inside move, and he just puts his right arm up there. That's tough. I mean, that's tough for a tackle. That's tough to blame him for that. As quick as Dent is. Here they come again. The bird just does get rid of it. He's got a man wide open. If he had just had a little time, and a flag goes down again. Gerald Carter was the intended receiver, and he was all alone. I'll tell you, and DeBerg took that pressure again from that backside. He had to get rid of the ball, but as you said, Gerald Carter foul on both teams. What a referee Ben Dreyer, he gets mad when you do something <laughs> like that. But watch this rush from the backside. There's Wilbur Marshall, 58. He'll be the first guy there. He hits him right after he throws it. And there's Singletary. That's where the fight or the skirmish started to cause the penalty. Now here's the wide open Carter. He ran right by Reggie Phillips. He Ooh. sold him on that inside move. Phillips went inside, and Carter was wide open outside. The Berg just didn't have the time. Less than 10 minutes left to play now. Tampa Bay leading Chicago 26-14. High kick that McKinnon signals fair catch and makes at the 15. 25 yard punt by Garcia. We have 9.50 left to play in the contest now. Six, the Chicago Bears 14. We're in the fourth quarter with 9.50 left to play. Chicago's committed four terminal turnovers. Time of possessions Tampa Bay 31.03, the Bears 18.52. The way Beak, Weeke got it. Two field goals. And I think uh, your hat has to be off to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's what I think. I mean, there can be a lot of reasons. There can be a lot of excuses. But to me, the way Tampa Bay has played for these three quarters, there's no excuses. I mean, they went out there, they whipped them in the line, they whipped them in the backfield. The quarterback has whipped them. They've been whipped every way you can be whipped thus far. It is first and 10 Chicago at their own 15. And McMahon still the quarterback. And he has taken some licks and survived, and he's back to throw again. This is a guy, Bozo, that they think is going to be a good tight end someday. Ditka's really high on him. First name, Cap. They got him from the Cardinals. Fit in perfectly. 6'3, 224, a rookie from Illinois. I think he'll be the future tight end of the Bears. Again. Pass complete. That's McKinnon who's spinning and stays on his feet and gets a Bear first down. I'll tell you, that was a heck of a catch and a run because usually when the ball and the defender get there at the same time, the ball pops out. And how McKinnon held on to this ball. Watch him. He has to turn, jump. The defender gets there, hits him. He just bounces back a little, then makes a move, gets up, puts the ball away, and gets a first down. I tell you, that's only for a first down, but that was a heck of a play. It really was. Heck of an effort. First and ten Bears. They still have Anderson and Peyton as the back. McMahon swings it out to Anderson. For an NFL update, once again, let's take you to Brent Musburger in New York. Well, Pat, the Saint defense could not hold that lead. Montana drives the Niners back down his third touchdown pass. This one to Wilson. Now San Francisco leads it 24-19. Back to Pat and John. And Jim McMahon has the Bears on the move down. Second down and two at the Tampa Bay 46. Take to Peyton. McMahon just gets rid of it. 
just overthrows Willie Gall. He had it. Well, that was the one. It was a smart play. You're going to go for it because time is starting to be important here. Down 12 points, you need two touchdowns. Now, there's 7 minutes, 45 seconds to go. So you can't spend all your time knocking time off the clock and methodically taking the ball down the field. Somewhere you got to get a quick shot when you need two. Third and two. Tom Zach signaling into McMahon. Right here, your debate has to be, hey, we need a first down. Get that and then start taking your shots again. That's what I would do. And with, again, being down two scores, if you don't make it on third down, you're going to go for it on fourth. You know that. McMahon. Back to Peyton. Peyton will have the first down and more. And gets it out of bounds. A gain of 10. Chris Washington knocked him out of bounds. Buffalo and Miami now tied in the fourth quarter. And Detroit coming back against Green Bay. Jets continue to lead Washington 16-14 in the fourth. Mike Ditka's team struggling to get back in the contest. 26-14. Tampa Bay leads the Bears. Clock is running. Seven, just less than 17. Man back to throw. Gets it outside to Anderson. He gets to the 30. Pickup of six. Irvin Randall stopped him. coaches when we talked to him yesterday were about as relaxed as I've seen either one of them. Uh, I think you know you get on the one point you're happy to have to strike over and have your players back and that will actually makes you feel good but then you got to play a game the next day. And it's been a whirl of a game. Here's McMahon up the middle. There's tight end also again. Bobby Kemp made the stop on a gain of 18, and the Bears moved down to the 12. I think Mike Ditka was surprised when he got Cap Bosa. As you said, they claimed him from the St. Louis Cardinals. He just was looking for a tight end. He needed a body, and he came up with this guy, and he said, hey, we got him here, and he said he could catch the ball and, and block, and, and I think he's going he's gonna to be our tight end. Morris to the left, Galt to the right. McMahon. Fires to Anderson, can't hold on. Started upfield just before the ball got there. This is good experience for McMahon. I don't know, you know, I mean, you need an experience. You have to get back, and when you get in this type of game on the road, no matter what you say about anyone, you have to be rusty. I mean, he's been going through surgery, he's been going through rehabilitation. Not much training camp. He really didn't do anything in training camp and got a strike. And then to come out here and, and, and play a game, whatever, you have to be rusty. And really just through during the strike period is when he started to get better, health-wise. He didn't make much progress for a long time in training camp. Back to throw. Has time. Has Morris. And about the one-foot line. Pickup of 11. Ricky Reynolds knocked him out of bounds. He came from the other side of the field. This is the guy that everyone likes is Ron Morris. They said, Jim McMahon said, he is going to be a great one. You know, he's not one that throws those words around like that. But they really like him. And you put him on one side with a Galt on the other side, and the Bears are going to have something they haven't had in a long time. And you mix in a little Dennis McKinnon, you really got a package. First and goal from about a foot away. Don't see any more fridge in these positions. No. Calvin Thomas, McMahon down. And again, you think back about that missed extra point by Tampa Bay. But they, the Bears did go get that touchdown. They still got five and a half minutes, so, so they eliminated that time thing. You watch a quarterback sneak from ground level here. McMahon just takes it right over the top. He got good blocking in there from Hilgenberg and Bortz and Thayer. 
and they let him just push it right in the end zone. Butler for the extra point. Harbaugh is holding. He missed it. He missed it. Wide right. Doesn't that change things around? Kevin Butler, who just missed that extra point, set to kick off for the Chicago Bears. Bobby Futrell back deep for the Bucks. 26-20, Tampa Bay leading. Futrell came out of the end zone and thought about going back, and then he had to come out. Maurice Douglas down to make the stop. Again, a reminder that next Saturday here on CBS, it'll be Syracuse with their record of 7 0 and their number nine ranking against Pittsburgh's Panthers at Pitt Stadium. Pitt's record 5 and 2. Both teams have a potential Heisman candidate, Heisman Trophy candidate. Syracuse quarterback Don McPherson. Pitt may have one. He's a candidate for next year. Junior tailback Craig Hayward. Two tough teams in the East. Syracuse and Pittsburgh next week, right here on CBS. DeBerg asked for quiet. 26-20 to Bucks lead. They hand off to Wilder. DeBerg has Ron Hall for a first down across the middle. A pickup of 17 stopped by Durson. That was an interesting play. They go to two tight ends, one running back, and they fake that counter play. Then they go bootleg. Then they hit their tight end, Ron Hall. That's that Redskin play, too. Remember that? Right. That's off that counter play with the old two tight ends deal. Richard Dent limped off the field. They go quickly. Bucks and Wilder over the right side. Al Harris has taken Richard Dent's place. Singletary made the stop. Wilder got four. Now that's the this is the offense that uh, that the Buccaneers used to use the the one back offense. There's Richard Dent over on the sideline looked like he might have turned an ankle or something like that. Well, of course right now the the Bucks are thinking of keeping it on the ground. Control the clock take time off the clock ball control not let the Bears have the ball back. Second and six. Here comes the blitz. The bird. Either he misread the pattern or a receiver misread the pattern. Dents back in now, so whatever it was, he he got it cleared up. And I think that this is a big play. This is a play that they need Dent on because this is that third down. And now the Bucks are either going to throw the ball or run a draw off it. So they need the pass rush in order to get the ball back. Third. And six, four minutes and five seconds left to play. Tampa Bay leading 26-20. Flag down. Pass was almost intercepted, intended for Mark Carrier. Dewerson made the last dive, but a flag down back at the line of scrimmage. That was a smart play by Steve DeBerg because he knew the Bears jumped offside. So in essence, it gave him a free play. So you might as well just throw it up deep because even if they intercept it, you're going to get it back. That still won't give him a first down, but it'll make it third and about a yard and a half. Less than four minutes. Defense is offside. Also, illegal hand to the face on a defense number of 95. Five-yard penalty, and that's a first down. Automatic first down. So we're going to see the, the offside was on the other side. There's Dent to Rob Taylor. You see the right hand to the face there. That was a penalty. Then he brought it down and did it again. Looks like he was getting ready to do it yet a third time. <laughs> Maybe he should have stayed hurt. Well, the tough thing about that is the offsides wouldn't have given him a first that's down, right. but that uh, blow to the head gave the Bucks a first down, and that's a big play. Under four minutes. 3.57 to be exact. First and 10. 
Bucks at their own 43. The bird to Smith. Then he gets outside the 45. Todd Bell wrapped him up there after a four yard pickup. Watch this block here that they get on Denton. He follows the guy in. Then, then he gets the block right there. And that's the play that lets Smith get to the outside. They cut Wilbur Marshall down, too, inside. That was the off guard, Rick Mallory. Second and six at the buck 47. Block running with 3.15 left to play. The bird, the Wilder. Wilder hit and hurled backwards by Wilbur Marshall. Got one. Both teams have all three timeouts remaining. The last time the Bucks had the ball, they didn't get anything out of it, but they kept it for over four and a half minutes. And they're having this kind of drive going again, you know, where you just pick up things, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Keep that offense off the field. Keep the defense on the field and wear them down. The Bears have used one of their timeouts. 26-20 Tampa Bay. 2.30 Eastern time. The last time this matchup meant as much to both teams was back in 1963. Paul Martha led Pitt to a 35-27 victory en route to a 9-1 season and a number four national ranking. This year, the Panthers made their mark by upsetting Notre Dame two weeks ago. Only loss suffered by the Irish this year. Meanwhile, in upstate New York, Syracuse has emerged as the new beast of these. This was one of four Don McPherson touchdown strikes to wide receiver Tommy Kane in yesterday's rout of Colgate. The Orange been crushed Penn State earlier, so Saturday afternoon, 2.30 Eastern time, it'll be Pitt and Syracuse here on CBS. Three minutes and eight seconds left at Tampa Stadium. Tampa Bay leading the Bears 26 to 20. Pat Summerall with John Madden. Steve DeBerg is quarterback the whole way. The Bears show a heavy rush. DeBerg gets it outside to Smith. And Smith struggles to get inside their territory. Not enough for a first down, a pickup of three. They are all over DeBerg again. This is the blitz that Ray Perkins was worried about yesterday. When Singletary gets up there on one side with another guy on the other side, you see how Singletary gets up there? He gets up in there sideways. He's going to hit that hole sideways. But they do a pretty good job of, of, of blocking it. They had Singletary on one side, Dewerson on the other side. That Bear defense has been on the field a long time today. Mike Singletary getting a little rest. Pat Summerall and John Madden again. Sold out Tampa Stadium in Tampa, Florida. The second meeting of the year between the Bears and the Buccaneers. The Bears won the first one 20 to 3 at Soldier Field. The Bucks got off to a 20 point first quarter. It was 20 to nothing at the end of one. The Bears came back. Anderson on a 38 yard run. And then a 68 yard punt returned by Dennis McKinnon. And then the touchdown dive by Jim McMahon, who's played the whole second half at quarterback. That's McKinnon standing back at his own 10 yard line Garcia who had a rough day punting for the Buccaneers will punt from his own 35. It would be Bears. interesting to see if the Bears come now they've already had three roughing penalties today in the punter. It looks like they're coming. A lot of pointing going on up there. You got him. You got him. I got him. Wait a long time. A bad snap. Garcia gets away a fine punt, a running punt, and McKinnon feels it. He's got some room and is hit down just inside the 30, where the Bears will take over with two minutes and 44 seconds to go. 36-yard punt, 16-yard return by McKinnon. The Steelers beat Cincinnati. Houston and Atlanta in the fourth. Detroit has really come from behind against Green Bay. 33-31, the Lions lead. Washington over the Jets now by one. 30-20, the Eagles over the Cowboys. Nobody has left. Mike Tomczak played the whole first half. The Tampa Bay is going to win against the Chicago Bears. I think they want to see it. 
McMahon, the quarterback. First down, 244 left to play. McMahon, back to throw. Has time and fires it outside to Willie Gall, who gets out of bounds and stops the clock. Enough for a first down, a gain of 19. McMahon's arm looks just fine. Well, I'll tell you here, he bought the time. See, Willie Gall can run this stuff and be so effective because those corners are scared to death of his speed. You see that Rod Jones was playing off him, afraid he was going to run deep. And Rep, he just cuts it off, and he's wide open. One of the things that Ray Perkins said he was looking for yesterday is a guy like Willie Gall, the burner. And then after he said that, he said everyone is, aren't they? <laughs> First down. And again, McMahon has time and gets it out to Anderson, and Anderson gets out of bounds. He's out of bounds at the 46-yard line of the Buccaneers. A gain of six. I'll tell you, the play that looms big now is that extra point block that Doesn't the Bears it? had. Remember that one was Al Harris when he was in the middle of the line, and he came right up the middle and blocked the extra point because if the Bears score, they need a touchdown here, not a field goal. But if they score, they can win this game. Kevin Butler missed an extra point the last time the Bears scored. Second and four at the 46. No pressure on McMahon again. And he gets it down to Morris. And Morris is down to the 27-yard line. Hop runs, 19-yard game. Bobby Kemp on the stop. Yeah, it's funny how how the Buccaneer defense has been so aggressive all day. And then they get ahead, then the Bears get the ball on this drive here, and they loosen everything up. How They're many, not playing aggressive. How many times do you see that happen? For Galt in the corner, and he's got it. And gets out of bounds. But they'd have the two-minute warning anyway. A gain of 17. Rod Jones took him out of bounds. And that was a tough throw by McMahon. A hard pass to throw. Tonight on CBS, if you don't know what cola payola means, ask the manager of your supermarket. If he won't tell you, then 60 Minutes will. Followed by Murder, She Wrote, starring Angela Lansbury. Then the CBS Sunday movie, Family Sins, starring James Farantino and L.A. Law's Jill Eichenberg. That's tonight on CBS. First down for the Bear. Ball right at the 10-yard line. McKinnon circles in motion. McMahon going right to work. Got a man open. Anderson down at about the six. Rick Woods made the stop. A gain of four. Block running. The Bears have one timeout remaining. McMahon shouting to the sidelines. This is his game now. No time for signs. He's doing the calling. And back in a hurry. And again, no pressure. Anderson again. Touchdown. Six-yard touchdown dive by Neil Anderson, and what a performance by Jim McMahon. If he doesn't already own Chicago, he will now. for the crucial. Bears lead by one. Some comeback. I don't think I've ever seen a kicker so excited when he kicked an extra point as Kevin Butler was on that one. He knew. McMahon baked the cake. He had to put the frosting on it. Here it is, McMahon looking. He finds Anderson, who starts to block. Now watch this dive. He starts on about the three-yard line and ends up with a somersault in the end zone. Six plays, 71 yards. They kept the ball a minute and 16 seconds. Here it is again. McMahon had 
had good pass protection. Anderson just sneaked between the guard and the tackle. The Buccaneers now have a minute and 28 seconds left to play in all three of their timeouts. The Chicago scoring drive. McMahon finished it off with a six yard touchdown pass to Anderson. McMahon was six for six during the drive. One of those passes all the way across the field to Willie Golf was a really difficult throw. You know, and that's the thing that's amazing with me. I mean, I've always been amazed about this guy. But he had to be rusty. And how he could come back and do that and run the team and run the clock and the two minute drill and do all these things. I don't care. I mean, there is a guy who knows this game. Butler to Futrell. Stays in the end zone. Next week's schedule, one of our games will be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers against Green Bay at 12.30 Eastern Time. I'll that tell you, Tampa Bay is going to be a team that's going to be in every game this year with this spirit and the way they play. The NFL today, of course, starts at 12.30. The game at 1. New Orleans, Buffalo, Washington. San Francisco and the Rams. That's where we'll be. Minnesota, Seattle. Detroit, Denver. Check your local listings as McMahon has sit on put on some performance. Well, you know, Mike Ditka says that McMahon is a starting quarterback. I mean, there was never any question about that. McMahon said, I wasn't beaten out. I got hurt. When I'm ready, the job should be mine, and it is. So I think that McMahon will be the starter from now on. A minute. Well, they're putting one second back on the game clock. Or trying to. Could he in his hands? Very well could be. I'm impressed with Mike Ditka that he could keep those suspenders on throughout that whole game. <laughs> I mean, I know I, I haven't worn suspenders, but I know that if I got in a tight one, I'd have them down around, you know, my waist. You know how that look is? That'd be ugly. That could cause trouble. <laughs> Bibber gives on a draw play to Smith. Or Wilder, beg your pardon. And the clock moves now with a minute and 18 seconds left to play. Less than that. Tampa Bay with all three of their timeouts, they're going to have to think about using some of them pretty quick. Second and six. High snap. DeBerg one hands it. Steps up away from Dent. Caught by Wilder. Mike Singletary just managed to drag him down. It'll bring up a third down situation. And three to go. You're right. The Bucks should take a timeout. They're just wasting time. That's dumb. They just take too much time there because they got to get down in scoring position. And they're they, less, less than 40 seconds now. They heard. And they have all three timeouts. Gets the ball to Wilder. Now they've certainly got to take one. But it's fourth down, too. No. That's why before third down, they should take a time and get a good play. You know, because you have your timeouts. Use your timeouts to get a good play. Now they get down to fourth down. And they have to come up with a play to get that first down, or they don't need those two timeouts. Plus, now they only got 29 seconds. They burned too much time. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the National Football League is prohibited. Chicago 27, Tampa Bay 26. DeBerg has had a rough day, physically wise. But you, he sure had a hot hand early, though, didn't he? Didn't he? That first, the first two drives, DeBerg 23 out of 38 on the day, two touchdowns. McMahon 17 out of 24 for 196, one touchdown and one interception. Tom Zack was 6 of 10 in the first half. He played the whole first half. McMahon played the whole second. Fourth and six. You know, one thing, this game, the Bears win this game in a tight game. It could be good for them because they realize that you can't lay off like that, that you missed it, and it takes hard work to be a great team. They 
jumped off sides. It will not be enough for a first down, I don't believe. They needed six. That five yard penalty will make it fourth and short now. But it sure changes things. I'll tell you, if I were a coach, that would that that would upset me. I mean, I think that's going to give Mike Ditka something to really get on him about because yard on the offense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Well, Ditka can't get on for that or it's against the offense, but but if the defense does it, you know, that's those are the things you can get on him for because that's just concentration, watching the ball, all those types of things. Fourth down now and 11. The ball has moved back to the 19. 26 seconds remaining to play. And the Bucks have two timeouts remaining. Twenty-seven, twenty-six. Missed extra point. The blocked extra point by Harris. After the Bucks' third touchdown. Some time back on the clock, back up to 29 seconds now. It'll be fourth and 11 at the 19. The Bird will operate out of the spread. It doesn't look as if the Bears are going to blitz. If they do, it'll be Wilbur Marshall coming. And Singletary now looks like he's coming. The Bird hit by Dent. And down he goes, and that should do it. That's why you play great players. You pay them a lot of money because they have to come up with big plays. It gets fourth down. Tampa Bay needs a first down in order to get in position to win the game. You need a, a sack. You need to stop them. Dent can't get blocked. That was a that was a fourth down fumble. The quarterback fumbled it. He's the only guy that can take one. The other guy took it. It's got to go back when the quarterback fumbled it. What he's saying on a fourth down fumble now the only guy that can recover it on fourth down is the guy who fumbled it. Now DeBerg can't he's the only guy that can recover it. He's down because Dent has him down. Now Tampa Bay recovers but it doesn't count anyway. As DeBerg did. It wouldn't have been a first down anyway. Well a lot to talk about today and coming up next the NFL today post game show with scores and highlights and there are a lot of scores and a lot of highlights this game alone well, I'll tell you it's good to have him back and it's good to have McMahon back that's Peyton and that'll finish things off that was a tough football game Hey, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you never like a loss and it doesn't do you any good. But if you can be proud of a loss, they can be proud of the way they played this Bear team today. Because for three and a half quarters, they whipped them. That evens their record at three and three. And the Bears improve their record to five and one. A sellout crowd enjoyed one pleasant afternoon of football weather-wise. But disappointed to see the home team lose. For John Madden, this is Pat Summerall saying so long from Tampa Stadium in Tampa, Florida, where the final score was Chicago 27, Tampa Bay 26. You've been watching.